So I'm off to get the plane to the airport, but first of all, I have to do my washing. So this is a big clue as to where we're going. So off we go. But where are we going? Have you guessed where we are yet? If you haven't guessed where we are, all you have to do is watch the video. It's the next video that's coming up. This is just a little bit of a, a pre-video. Um, but everything is in English. And they drive on the right hand left hand side like the English. No more clues. Watch the video. Is the view from our hotel. And the plan is go for a swim at about six o'clock tomorrow morning which could transfer to seven eight or nine but at the moment it's 37 degrees so it's very very warm Whew, very warm
this is the Our Lady of Mount Carmel Basilica in Valletta, which was one of the first uh, churches to be built in Malta between in 1570. Uh, so dedicated to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. But during World War II, between 1940 and 1945, the church was hit by a lot of bombing. It was basically flattened and they built this new church on the foundations of the old one, but a lot of motor was destroyed by bombing during World War II. to the Maltese Falcon, which was what the Knights of St. John paid for the rent of Malta. One Maltese Falcon per year. And yet another church in Valletta, capital of Malta, and they say that if you were to visit one church a day in Malta, it would take you over a year to visit all of them. And next to it, you can see, is the Cross of St George, which is the flag of England, not Great Britain or United Kingdom. The battlements that surround Malta, you can see why it was virtually or was impregnable. They're massive. See lots of weird things in the sea. But here is a chicken and a rabbit, which is a bit weird.
this is the maritime route of the Saint-Jacques pilgrimage trail. This is the entrance to the Fort Sant'Angelo. So these are the underground passages in the Fort Sant'Angelo, used during the war, uh, expanded by the Royal Navy to include even pistol firing ranges. I've got my sunglasses on, I can't see a damn thing. But let's turn right here. Apparently it's 1.5 kilometers of these. And that's what they look like. That looks like, that's an old map. So this was a memorial to the great siege against the Turks in 1565 and also the victims of the Black Plague of 1676. <sighs> I don't normally come to these places that you visit, you know, you pay for a ticket and you go around and there are sort of things which could be interesting, but you're not really sure because there's no information. Now, Fort San Angelo is completely different. It gives all the history right the way up to, well, the present period, but particularly from the Phoenician times to the Second World War. Um, and there's loads and loads of little signs uh, the little did you know signs and it tells you everything uh, there are videos everywhere there are some reconstructions it's not over commercial but it's just so informative and so interesting it's an absolute must and then when you look across there at that beautiful beautiful view across to Valletta it's just brilliant you get some of the best views in Malta here uh, especially uh, in Valletta so I would say this is a thumbs up it's definitely worth a visit brilliant for San Angelo Alright, let's go up here and see what the view's like from there. There's an old chapel as well, one of the oldest parts of the fort, a must-see, apparently. important for any siege there is a well here and over here 12th century is the magistral palace and this is called the Nymphaeum it's the only part of Fort Sant'Angelo which doesn't have a military means it's just for relaxation and it was built with its back to the sun's path so that it would always be in the shade and at the moment it's in the shade how oh, lovely there in the distance on the other side of Valletta because we're on the other side of the harbour is the memorial bell 
and this bell is rang every day. The Blitz bell, in fact, I think it's called. And next to it is a reclining uh, person, a statue of a reclining person, which represents the people that died during Malta, during the Second World War's bombing. It was, in fact, Malta was the most bombed part of the world in the 40s during the Second World War. This is just for, you know, people's general culture. This part of the fort is actually Roman blocks, and they don't know whether it was from us, one that's here on the site, or whether it was just reconstructed and sort of recycled from another site, but those are Roman blocks. In fact, I just realized that this is the round tower. There was another one over there which was round and it was a tower, but this is the round tower here. There you go. Another round tower, but it was here during the Ottoman siege uh, in the 16th century, where all of the treasure was locked away, including all of the military, uh, not the military, but the religious relics. The Christian relics were all locked in here. In fact, during the siege by the Ottomans, which was in 1565, uh, when the Ottomans caught um, the Christian knights or soldiers or whatever, they beheaded them and then they put them on their bodies, the remaining of their bodies, onto wooden beams and floated them across the harbour to Valletta. And so what the knights did, they then had lots of Ottoman prisoners and they beheaded them and they fired their heads through cannons to the other side to this side <laughs> great times <laughs>
to discover what's over there. Let's go. Right, so we're going up to look at the panoramic view from the citadel in Victoria Gozo. Hey, well, there it is. It's the view from the top of the citadel in Victoria, which is the capital of the small island of Gozo, which is part of the Maltese archipelago. And you can just see for miles and miles to the sea. Next stop from there is Sicily, about 80 kilometers away. Wow, and you can just see these places were totally impregnable. Never taken, ever. I'll read that one up, but I don't think they ever were. Massive. <laughs> And this is the old prison in the citadel, complete with stocks. This is the Gwenji, maybe I'm not saying that right, salt pans. These were used even in Roman times and are still used today to produce natural salt. And I'll tell you a bit more about them. But absolutely amazing. Obviously, I think I need to get up a bit higher to really appreciate them. And here you can see the water is evaporating and salt crystals are forming. So probably be ready pretty soon to, to harvest that, possibly tomorrow. They seem to have gone by now because it says there's a closing time and an opening time. But being you're not even allowed on here, um, it's called a protected agricultural area all the way from here right the way down to where you can see the sea coming in and it's just production of salt but artisanal production it's not industrial and this is the Mediterranean but you think it was the Atlantic it's pretty rough this side but beautiful and there's actually a breeze today it's about 35 degrees but with this lovely breeze it feels quite manageable This is a 17th century windmill. Yeah, this is a 
place, it looks beautiful, but it's crowded. Loads and loads of people. Okay, so this behind me is called, I just cut my head off a little bit, but it's called Muster Church, the big dome. And they call it also the Miraculous Church. And we'll go inside in a second and we'll find out why it's called the Miraculous Church. Um, apparently it's the fourth biggest unsupported dome like this in the world. I don't know what the other three are, but there you go. So we're gonna go inside and have a look at why it's called the Miraculous Church. It is very big and it's a really unassuming village and apparently there's not many tourists come here for some reason which is unusual as it is the miraculous church and let's go inside and see why right i've just noticed it's called master rotunda there you go massive thing the balcony of the church. It's like a big stairway. So this we're at the top the inner gallery of the dome. You can see all around. As I said, it's supposed to be the fourth biggest in the world of an unsupported dome that is. Because there are probably bigger domes, but these are unsupported. Goes up, goes down, so let's go back down to the ground floor, down this big spoil step. Very, very ornate church, like a lot of them in Malta. It's fabulous. The reason why this is called the Miraculous Church is because it was full of people praying, the congregation was there praying, and through the roof came the, a bomb and it stayed unexploded and this is a replica of that bomb and nobody was killed this was in the 9th of April 1942 this is a picture of where the bomb came through the roof absolutely incredible that it didn't explode Now we're going down to the World War II shelter. People would have sheltered during the air raids during World War II. And these are the tools that they use to excavate these tunnels. They even did barbers and hair dressing in the tunnel during the air raids. They washed their clothes, they lived down here, they ate here, they slept here. Incredible. <sighs> All of the town of Mostar would have been crowded in here for days on end as Italian and German bombers just rained down bombs on Malta.
working on the all clear came. They all came out through this way. So this is a, a traditional Maltese game called Porchi. Okay, so I have two jacks, one red and one yellow. I know, more. And then they've got like, looks like blocks. So one's just knocked it away. This guy's come with his green blocks. Oh well. And he knocks the red one out of the way. And then he gets another go with the red one. This is confusing. Now he comes along with another green block. And he missed it. So there you go, that's Porchy. is called Mdina and there are two twin cities if you like towns one is Mdina and one is Rabat just like Rabat in Africa and just like mid North Africa and Medina and it was first the Greeks and then the Romans uh, took it over and after the second Punic Wars the Romans then made this a lot bigger and then in 870 it was taken over by the Arabs from North Africa now these were these Arabs stayed here until about the 11th century, 1090 something. Um, now Roger, uh, one of the big knights of Saint John, didn't actually chase the Arabs away, but they actually became slaves of uh, Roger, and they didn't get chased out of Malta until the 13th century, until about 1271, uh, by the the knights of Saint John. But this is a massive place, and we're going to visit Medina, Umdina. It looks like Medina, but Umdina and Rabat today. So we're going to go into these this massively fortified um, city. Off we go. <laughs>
This is Masashlok. Sorry for the pronunciation to any Maltese people who might be watching, but I think it's pronounced like that. It's a little fishing village just along the coast from where we are in Berzibuga. Once again, sorry for the pronunciation. Well, let's go and explore. Apparently there's a fish market here, which we're going to go and see now. So now we're going on a boat trip on Charlie's boats, who I will tag in the video, to St. Peter's Pool, which is just off of Marcus Shanna. Off we go. Yes, the sea is perfect. Today very good. No medusa. No no jellyfish. <laughs> yes, because yesterday I visited the jellyfish here. This is St. Peter's okay. Pool. Full of people, so a place to avoid probably if you don't like crowds. But really beautiful coastline. And we've just had the skipper telling us of the boat go and we're just going towards the rocks. But we're okay. There you go. You have to fish anywhere, you might as well fish here. 